Hi, my name is Greg Medora and I'm with the Oil the Crafter. My wife Judy is behind the camera today. Today we'll be talking about a portable battery box build that are recently completed. This build, uh, my primary purpose for this was to use it for uh, off-site for amateur radio communication, etc., but it could be used for a number of the different things. Uh, running uh, emergency medical equipment like a CPAP machine could be used for also for other, other types of equipment as well. But uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the, the primary components that make up in this particular build. First thing we started with here was we started with a DeWalt 15 gallon toolbox and we wanted it relatively portable, need to have a handle to be able to move it around in. That was the first thing. Uh, the second thing is the primary component, the battery itself, is a Power Queen. It's a 12 volt, um, 100 amp hour Group 31 a LiPo 4 battery, 1,280 watt hour capacity. It has uh, several thousand full 100% recharges uh, rated on this battery. Um, we've got a main battery box to help hold it into the bottom of the case. And then we also have a charger that is a, uh, it's a, uh, a Genius 10, Naco Genius 10 amp uh, smart battery charger. Now, one of the things you have to be sure about is when you buy a battery charger, make sure that it has the right charging profile for the battery type. So for example, some of the lesser expensive ones have charging profiles for lead acid or AGM or gel type batteries. So you need to make sure that the charging uh, capability that you have includes the lot battery, battery chemistry that you're using. Now, the other thing that we also used is we also used a Victron uh, solar charge controller. This thing does have the ability to be able to be charged with a solar charge controller. In this case, we used a Victron uh, 20 amp uh, solar car charge controller. That particular charge controller can be used uh, monitor via Bluetooth if you're charging via solar. So that way you can determine uh, how, much, uh, how much energy amperage is flowing into, voltage is flowing into your battery for charging purposes. So with that, we're gonna stand up here and we'll open up the case here. So first thing you notice, it has a nice latch to help keep everything closed. It has a tray inside of it. You notice in this tray right here, we have, this is the AC ch uh, charger that we have here. This is just a plug-in, uh, a small inverter that we have here. Um, that can plug into the uh, ports on the front. And then I've got some spare blade fuses in here as well. All right, so let's look down here inside of this case. So the first thing you'll see is this is the Power Queen battery right here. Again, it's a 12.8 volt and it's a 100 amp hour battery. All right. So over here on this side, this blue box here, this is a solar charge controller. Okay, the solar charge controller, we have two wires that come in. There's a port back here on the back. I'm gonna spin this around so you can see it. This is the input for the solar panel right here. If you can see that, that's the input for the solar panel to be able to charge it. Now what's very interesting and unique about how I designed this is that that solar charge controller, what it does is, is the ports come off of this solar charge controller to before they run to the battery, the positive comes in here to this. This is a three-way switch right here. And you'll notice right here, I have AC and I have solar. I have both of those two hooked up and depending upon which position the switch is in, I can charge it with AC power or I can charge it here's the lead here for the AC you can see that the AC charger it has that same connector on it right here to plug into now why in the world would you think you're probably thinking well why in the heck would I need this switch well 
if the AC charger is hooked up, I didn't want uh, current or voltage from this to flow back into the charge controller and vice versa. In the solar charge controller, if it's running and charging the battery, I don't want it flowing into this port here, which potentially would be flowing into the AC charger. So that's why I put this switch in, in place here. And originally, I bought a, a greater depth um, outlet box here, but then I couldn't get the battery in down inside of here, so I had to go to a much more shallower box here. But the, the positive side of this runs to the switch, positive side from the solar charge controller runs into the other side of the switch, and then the white wire out actually runs in over here to, to this. This is a master disconnect. This is for the positive side. Over here, I have one for the negative side. The negative from the AC charger, the negative from the solar charge controller, both connect in here to the load side of this switch. All right. Now, the other thing that we have connected on, on to, the, to the positive here is I have the positive coming out of here, and I actually have this set up to where this is an inline switch, and we're actually going to turn this on for you so you can see it. So by engaging these switches here, you can see, and my meter is upside down. So let's, let's see if we can't flip that around there for folks. But you can see, so right now it's showing me the amount of amperage use and voltage and, and et cetera on the battery itself. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to turn the power on. So now you can see we have power. We have some, we don't have any power usage yet. So we're gonna turn on these lights here. And now you can see we have power usage. If you come down here to the front, you see we have a couple of work lights here on the front. That's to provide a work light in this area here. These particular set of switches right here, you notice we've got a voltage. So this has a voltmeter in the middle of it, and it has two USB 3 ports. You can charge a phone, you can charge a tablet, anything that has a USB port to it, um, you, could, you could charge it with that, or there's some devices like ham radio related, like a Raspberry Pi, for example, could actually run off of these ports right here. The other thing we have here is what we used to call a cigarette lighter adapter. Now they just call it a 12 port, 12 volt port here. And you can plug, so that remember that inverter that I had earlier? This is a 150 watt inverter. I can plug that in right here, and this, and then I'll have AC power coming out of this in this very uh, low power. This is about a 150 watt inverter, but it does provide AC power. Also has a USB port on it. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn these, turn these lights off here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn these ports off here. But the other thing I also wanna point out is, is I also have a set of two sets of Anderson power poles. And you say, well, what the heck do I use those for? Well, that has pretty much become the de facto standard for all amateur radio gear is Anderson power pole. So I have two sets of those. And each of these devices here that I mentioned, these are all fused. So if we look down here in this box right here, you'll have trouble seeing it. This is a fuse box right here. And each individual item, you'll notice we have different fuses for each individual item. So for example, the work lights are fused. This uh, bar here that has the uh, USB port and the 12 volt port, it's fused. The Anderson power poles, they're also fused, right? So we'll put that back on there. All right, so the other thing that we did down here in the bottom, and you may have a little bit of a difficulty seeing it, but down here in the bottom, we want to make sure that this battery didn't slide around. So we actually have a group 31 battery tray down here in the bottom. I know it's kind of tough to see if you want to focus right down in here, 
right down here. You see that right there? That's the battery tray. So what we did was we drilled a hole in the bottom. There's some, there some placement for screws to come up from the bottom. And I put a nut on it and tightened it down. So that battery tray, and with this strap, that battery is not going anywhere. It's not sliding back and forth this way. It's not sliding back and forth this way. It's just in place, All right? Um, and again, we've got the inline um, amp, volt meter, watt meter. And, and we can plug in, again, either a solar panel to charge or the AC power here to charge that. So with that said, I could also, if I wanted to, I could also add an inverter, a small inverter to this to be able to drive AC power. If I needed something more than that 150 watt inverter that I have here that plugs into the, into the 12 volt port adapter here, if I needed something more than that, I could put a small inverter in here and run that small inverter as well. So, um, with that said, I don't, I can't really think of anything else that I necessarily want to cover. Uh, we will, I will say that uh, I will include a complete parts list, including the links to those parts and the cost that I paid for those. I will uh, include that in the comments below. And again, uh, one, if you've got any questions, please feel free to uh, post some questions there. Um, if, if you like the, con the content, uh, appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we want to thank you so much today for watching um, the Oily Crafter uh, YouTube channel. So again, we want to wish you a very blessed day and thank you so much for watching.